everybody. Hi, everybody. Uh, well, welcome to another edition of uh, Thursday Live. Um, pretty excited about this one. I know um, Jan's going to show off the 10 needle, which is my personal favorite machine. So, um, yeah, it's really nice. It's it's actually like we were just talking. It is actually kind of a home machine. I mean, it's built for some industrial, but um, definitely is, is a machine that our, our home um, customers have. So uh, always nice to learn something on that. Just to kind of want to touch base again, we have our annual um, Super Bowl sale coming up next weekend. We'll do it Saturday in Davenport, Sunday in Iowa City. Everything's on sale. I'm really excited to be able to do it again. We haven't done it in about three years since with COVID. So really excited. We'll have snacks, uh, games. Little uh, Smokies. Little Smokies will probably be there, yes. <laughs> um, but again, everything's on sale, thread and all that. It is a, You do need to come in. It's first come, first serve type thing. So... Um, but I will send out an email and, and put more uh, Facebook fo- posts up on that with information. Um, also, just kind of want to uh, let everybody know we do have uh, some really nice previously loved sewing machines or used machines. Um, we ha- have those on display um, next week as well, and, unless we sell them, which is that happens too. So um, anyway, uh, again, uh, can't wait for a Super Bowl sale. My team, the Chiefs, are going back to the Super Bowl, so I'm really, really pumped up about that. So I'm going to be in a great mood. To, what to day is it, Tim? Huh? What day is it? It is next Sunday. The Super Bowl is next Sunday. So Oh, yeah. the sale is Saturday in Davenport? Saturday in Davenport, Sunday in... Um, next week. The following week, yeah. so not this weekend. So I'm sorry I'm not as prepared. That will be February... 11th and 12th. So 11th in Davenport, 12th in, in Iowa City. So can't wait to see everybody again. Uh, enjoy uh, today's show, lesson, whatever, and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Tim. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. So, yeah, Tim had to, Tim has to go work in a school. He has to go to a school and, and, and service some sewing machines. So, um, so we're going to um, talk about the about the PR. Um, I like to sew on my PR. And as I did a video here, what, a a few, uh, several weeks ago, it was four or five weeks ago. Let me get the banner off here so I don't forget that. Um, I did a, a video about four or five weeks ago about the PR and I use the PR as a home machine. So I do my normal home machine activities with my PR. Um, the PR runs a little differently because of course, you know, it has 10 needles. So like, um, what we're going to talk about today is applique. So I get a lot of questions about applique with the PR because it's like, well, how do you applique with it? It doesn't stop. Well, it does because we can make it stop. Okay. Um, and, um, so I'm going to talk about making it stop today. Also, um, I get a lot of questions about how to deal with the colors and where they go on the machine because, you know, there's 10, 10 pins up there. So I get a lot of questions about that. And um, I get a lot of questions about um, will this machine do a design that's more than 10 colors? Yes, it will. So the machine's very smart. So we're going to talk about that as well. I'm going to show you a photo stitch and what the machine will do. Um, if it is got 10 or maybe 15 or 17, or I've, I've done some things with 40 color changes and sometimes, you know, you have to stop and it, you have to change colors a few times, but not 40, maybe, maybe only four times. So that's good. You know? All right. So we're going to talk, we're just going to talk about home machine usage of the PR because I use it for this all the time. And this is basically the machine I like to sew on the most. Um, I teach usually with my luminaire just because that's what most of you have, but this machine is very fun to sew on. So, okay. So let me switch over my camera. Hopefully it works. I forgot to check it today. So we'll see. (laughs) Hopefully it works. Okay. And we're going to start with a little applique. Okay. And I'm going to, I'm probably going to have a little bit of a glare. I'm so sorry because it is so hard to get rid of the glare on the screen. If I tip it down, I think it'll be okay. All right, there's one. Let me get the cam. Let me get the microphone here. All right, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Second, I'm trying to get my, there we go. All right, so it looks up better and that's tipped down a little bit. So hopefully you won't get too much glare. Okay, 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about how to set up your machine because we're also going to set the colors up. OK, because uh, when you buy designs like I'm going to use a Kimber little Kimberbell design today, when you buy designs, they do not come up up. They do not come up in the machine with the correct colors. I mean, that's just the way it is. There's not one design out there except the ones in the machine that are going to come up with the right colors other than ones that I make in PE design or if you have the baby lock version, the palette. So this is the 10 needle. This is the Brother 10 needle PR 1055X. And then the, the um, Venture would be the baby lock version of this machine. So I have that's what I'm working on today. Um, and then if some of you have some of the older machines, we'll talk a little bit about some of the differences because there are a few differences about where some of these buttons are. So when I show you something, you may have to look a little bit further to find it on your machine, okay? All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is that inside the settings page, and you can see the little button down here, it looks like a piece of paper, okay? There's a couple of things that I wanna do. I wanna, I'm gonna go over here a couple pages, and there's a page that looks like this. And it has all of these buttons on it. And then it has this little thing that looks like an anchor on it. So the way I use the machine, I often am doing stuff that say, I sometimes have 30, 40 color changes. I do not want any of these colors to be what they call anchored, okay? So what that means is you can touch this and say, oh, I always want number one to be 1334. That's the only color I ever want on there. And you'd hit this little anchor. You can see there's a little anchor up here now. I want nothing anchored because it's really hard. Then I have to work around just the other nine pins. Okay. If this one's always anchored to 1334, then no other color can ever go there except 1334. Well, in my case, you know, if I'm doing 40 color changes, I need to use all of these so I don't have to thread the machine so often. Okay. So I don't want any of these to be anchored. This is in the settings. So I'm just going to click that anchor off and now nothing has a little anchor next to it. Okay. The other thing that's cool about this though, let's say that we're working on something that has metallic. So I do use the anchors sometimes, but very rarely. Let's say I, on number six, I have some metallic thread. I can anchor that one and then see this little button here that says 1000. Let's say that I have number six is always going to be my metallic thread. I can turn that, that needle down, say to maybe 700 or 500 for my metallic thread, if you're having problems with that. And it's nice to be able to turn one of the needles down and not have to manually sit there and wait till it gets to that and then turn it down. I can just tell it on that needle, it's always going to be at 800 or 700, okay? So that is something that I do use. I like that feature. So we're not going to be using that today. So I'm just going to turn it off. So none of these are anchored, okay? So that's the first thing I want everybody to do is not have any anchors on, okay? So I'm going to click OK. Actually, I'm going to go back a couple pages first. And these... This, this is page one on my machine, and it is most of the time page one. Um, I am going to go ahead and change this to a clean screen. Okay. And this button, these two items right here are how the machine is going to tell you what the colors are. Okay. So I like to get it to come up with the color numbers. And it can say name of color, but that only works for the original 60 colors that brother had. So I don't use name of color very often because I'm very limited to the colors. You can do time, which I don't usually do. I like number one, two, three. It's going to come up on the screen with a color number that I can look at on my school of thread. Okay. And then the other thing that I like to do is I like to change this thread chart. So this is the thread chart down here. And I normally use the Pace Setter Pro, which is the brother thread. That's what they call it now. So there's a bunch of other color charts in this. Floriani. And if it's on original or embroidery, that is the original 60 colors that brother had. 
kind of limited. Country is some of the brother thread. There's like Madeira Poly, Madeira Rayon, Sulkies. There's a bunch of them in here. They've added quite a few, Isochord, Guterman, okay? So what I normally do, the, I set it at the chart that I use the most often, and I primarily use Pace Setter Pro. So that's where I'm going to leave it, okay? So I'm going to click OK. I've got number one, two, three in Pace Setter Pro. I'm going to click OK. Now, like I said, when you bring in, I'm, we're going to do an applique. So I happen to put it, instead of doing it wirelessly, I did put it on a USB stick today. So I'm going to hit my little USB, okay? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose this little applique. All right, so this is a little applique. And I'm going to go ahead and click set on that, okay? Now, as you can see, it is kind of the colors, but it's not really, okay? I don't, it's not really the colors I want it to be. So what I do now, um, I have to go back a little bit to the, um, the machines read colors differently now, the newer machines. So if you have an older machine, a 1050 or like a, a Valiant, that would be the predecessor to this machine or older, I would tell you in the settings to set your machine at number one, two, three in broad read. And I'll tell you why. If you change colors in your PE design software, in your PEP, your dime software, it will come up if you have this set at number one, two, three, and the word embroidery, it will come up with the right colors all the time. This machine is different. It will not do, it doesn't read the, col the colors the same way. So you have to have the color chart chosen of what you're going to be using before you bring in the design. Okay, so I that's why I leave mine at Pace Setter Pro because I normally that's what I use. Okay, they've changed the way things read a little bit, so it can get a little confusing here. Okay, so what I do now instead of changing the designs, yes, that's an excellent. Uh, thanks, Lynn. Lynn had a little problem this weekend that her machine also was not updated. She has a 1050 and she was having trouble with her machine reading the colors of her photo stitch she was going to work on. We're going to talk about that at the end. And um, so make sure your machines are up to date. Check the, in the settings, check your, your, and this goes for all machines. Make sure that you're, you're running the most current version because they fix things. In her, in her case, it was a, it was a color problem and it fixed her, that machine by her doing the update. Okay, so it's very important to keep your machines updated to the current version. Thanks, Lynn. Okay, so I have, so instead of me changing this in my software, I used to just bring everything up in my software, change the colors really fast, leave my machine at one, two, three embroidery, and then it would come up with the colors I chose. Well, guess what? These newer machines don't do that very well anymore. So I don't do that, but there's a way in the machine, a very fast way in the machine the older machines also have this, but not as many thread charts. I change the colors right in the machine and it makes it come up right on the screen. So I know where to put all my colors on, it makes it very easy. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. So I brought up my little applique. It is kind of close probably, but it isn't the colors I wanted to use. So when you get, I'm going to hold this up briefly in front of you. When you get your designs, you know, you have a little color chart like this. So here's my little color chart for those little uh, heart cherries, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go back. Let me go back a screen. Let's just bring it back up so we can go do from the beginning. So here's my little, my little design I want. It's four by four. I'm going to hit set, okay? Then I have my editing screen, okay? This little button right here, is going to allow me to change colors in the machine. And it's very fast in the new machines. The older machines don't have the tab that I'm using. They just have color chips. I have a tab in this new machine where I can tell it what color I want it to be. I want it to be Pace Setter Pro because that's what I chose. 
I can also change it to a different color if I need to up here. Okay, so I'm going to leave it a paste header pro. Okay, and then these are the little color tips. It's a little hard sometimes if you just know basically what color you can change it here. But I like to know the exact color number because I like the color numbers. So what I did on my little piece of paper, I'll hold this up again. I wrote my color numbers on here that I want to use for my design. So on this machine, I have a tab, and this is also in the Luminaire, by the way. I have a tab here that I can choose. I can just type in the number. So then I know exactly what color it is. So my first step, whoops, I just dropped my paper. Okay, so the first step is the little leaf up here. And I want that to be color number 027. So I'm going to hit the C for clear, 027. And then it turned it to my green. And then I'm going to go to the second color. I'm just going to touch the bar. And I want it to also be clear. Always hit clear first, 027. I want that to be green. Third color, whoops, third color is going to be red. So I want clear 800. That's the color of red. Fourth color, again, red. See, and then 800. See how fast this is? It's all right in the machine. And then the fifth color is, oh, my darker color for my stems. So I chose 515. So I'm going to hit the C, 515. Okay. And then I'm going to go down to the next one. And that is going to be my 027 again. So clear, 027. Okay, there's my leaf. And then at the bot, the next one is going to be my little hearts. And those are red. So I'm going to hit C and then 800 for the red. And then the last color is going to be the little decorative thing in the hearts. And that's going to be white. So clear, 001. So those are the colors that I want for this little design. I'm going to click OK. And now it's all the right colors up here. Okay, see how fast that was. And I've done stuff like this that had 40 colors. I just, just go down and click each one and touch it and, and change the color. Now, if you have an older machine, an older one of these, like a PR1000 or maybe a PR650, you could change the colors also in your software. Set your machine to, to um, 123 embroidery, and then they will come up correctly in the machine. These machines, the new ones, have a different way of reading the, the thread charts. Okay, so I've got my colors changed the way I want them. I'm going to hit edit end. Now, when we do embroidery or when we do applique, you know, the machine needs to stop, right, for us to do stuff. We need it to stop so we can lay fabric down, so we can trim, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to tell the machine to stop right now. Okay. I can tell now my machine, and just so you know, it's going to be in a couple different places. My This machine, I have this one at home. This little symbol right here has this little hand. And what that means is that I can make the machine stop. Okay, this little hand is going to tell me it can stop. I can also skip a step. Okay, if you have one of the older machines, I'm just going to go back to the edit screen. It is in that button, that little hand button is in where the colors are. So there'll be a little hand button on here. It just doesn't happen to be, it's, it, they moved it between the 1050, I think the 1050 and the 1055. So, um, and I know they did, I had a PR1000 before that. So that, so that's where it is if you have an older machine, it's in with the colors, okay? So I hit edit end again. Now I'm gonna go in and I need this machine to stop, okay? So there's two ways to do this. We'll talk about the other way once we get to that last screen. But I'm just going to program this in. So I need it to sew the first step, which is going to be the placement line for the leaf. Okay, well, I need it to sew that. And then the second, I need it to stop, though, before it sews step number two, because I need to lay the fabric down. So I'm going to touch the step number two, and I need it to stop. So I'm going to put a hand there. I want it to stop. I also need it to stop before step number three, because I need to trim my green fabric before I go on to the red. So I'm going to put another stop there. Okay. And I want to do, let's see, this one here is going to be, we need it to stop. This is going to be the, it's going to sew out the placement line then for the hearts. And then I need it to stop again because I need it to 
stop before so I can lay my fabric down again. And then this one is going to be the lead. So I need it to stop before this because I have to trim the hearts. So what I do is, you know, I think most of you have done applique. So you know that we have to do a placement line. It stops. We put the fabric down. We need it to stop and then we need to trim. Okay. So I need it to stop the like four times at the very beginning. Okay. This is a different kind of applique. So sometimes, you know, the appliques will have, you'll have some sewing and then it'll, you'll need it to stop three or four um, colors on down the road. This one happens to be all at the beginning. Okay. So I'll show you another way to do this. There's a manual way that we used to have to do this. There was a manual way to do it, but this one is cool because I can just program it all in. I've got all my stops in here. And I think the rest of them, I'm just going to look at it. The rest of them are just the satin stitches. So once I'm all done trimming, I don't have to have it stop anymore. So I think we're good. All right. So I'm going to hit OK. So I've got them stopped where I need it to stop. So yes, you can do applique, can't you? You just tell it where to stop. So I'm going to hit embroidery now. OK. So now it's going to tell me where to put my colors. It tells me up here that I need to have my green, my lighter green on number one. And the, the machine is very smart. So just so you know, if you happen to have these four colors up before, like I, I did this earlier and my white I'd had on the machine earlier and it was over here on number seven. So it's very smart. So if you, re, if you had that same color up yesterday, it may remember that it might still be there and it'll tell you to put it over there. Now, in my case, it did choose one, two, three, and four, but it may not do that. Watch what it tells you to do, okay? And if you've got four colors and only three show up here, check down here to make sure that it, it, it didn't remember it being on one of these other pins. So in my case, Mine ended up being, I only had three up here this morning when I did this because my white had been on number seven. So I, I was playing around doing some other stuff today and so see it moved it. So now I've got them on one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we're gonna put uh, the green on number one. So I don't know if you can see me, I'm gonna kind of tip this up so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna tie on, I've got threads back here. I'm gonna tie an overhead knot or overhand knot on the green and then number two is the red. So I'm going to tie that one on. This is a very fast way to do the do the threading. Okay. And then number three is the darker green. So here's my darker green. Okay. Tie that one on. I hardly ever re-thread the entire machine. This is very fast. You do have to thread it um, the first time, obviously. And then see now number four has this other thread on it. So I'm just gonna break this thread. And then I'm gonna pull that one off and, I'm, and that one says it's supposed to be my white. So I know where the threads are and so does the machine because it told me where to put them. Okay, so there's my white. So. Now I'm going to pull back a little bit here. Hopefully you'll be able to see. I'm going to click, click. Uh, I'll, I'm going to click close here. I can't stand the blinking. <laughs> I've that's the only thing I've never, I've never liked about my machine. It blinks a lot. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pull these threads. I'm going to see if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to thread this machine. So remember, I was on on number one. Take my hoop out. It's a little easier. Get my hand in here. So I'm going to grab the thread out of the needle. I'm going to pull it through. Okay. And all I have to do is hit the threading button. So I'm going to hit the needle threader because it's already on, on needle number one. I'm going to put it across up and over the little threader and hit the threader button. I'm going to go up here. Let me turn my camera just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. The little box is up here. I have to hit number two because now I need it to move to number two. Okay. I'm going to grab that thread out of the needle head or the needle eye, pull it down till I see the knot, hit the threader button, and up and over. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit the little box up on the screen for number three, grab the thread out of the eye of the needle, pull it down till I see the knot, 
thread the needle. Okay, so it makes it very fast. So sometimes you have to do all 10 of these. And if you do it this way, it makes it very fast. So here's number four. I got to hit number four on the screen and then hit the little needle threader. No, I do not open the tension bar um, when I'm just pulling through. So Lynn is asking about the little tension bar at the top of the machine. I'll, when I get the camera back up there, I'll show you. Um, I have to have that open when I'm threading the machine from scratch, but I don't, I don't um, open it. I don't open it when I'm just pulling through. Okay. All right. So I've got all my needles are threaded. The first four. I'm going to put my hoop back on. Now, the one thing I would say about applique, just so you know, I if you can see it very well. Let me pull this camera back this way just a little. Um, these hoop, most of the hoops have a screw at the at, on one side. The big hoop has two of them. But what I do so that I know I'm getting my applique hoops, think that I'm applicating back in correctly, I always put the screw towards my tummy. Then I know that that's always the bottom because ask me how I know I have turned my hoops upside down when I've taken them out to trim my appliques. And yes, you can put them in backwards. Okay. So what Lynn is referring to, I don't know if I can tip this up and up. There we go. This little thing here, when you're threading the machine from scratch, you need to have this open up here. I do not open it when I'm just pulling through. I leave it shut because this is part of the tension and this needs to be shut when the machine is running. Otherwise, it'll stop a lot. Okay, so make sure this is shut. So I don't open it unless I'm threading a whole needle from scratch. Okay. All right. So is this making sense to everybody so far? We got the machine threaded. I put the threads where it told me to put them. Now be on the lookout though, if like yesterday you had that white thread, like it was over here on seven before. Okay. So I had it, I had to put it back there because I'd taken it off. But it the machine remembered it being there yesterday. So you have to kind of watch. And if you see, and if you think you're putting 10 colors on and only eight show up here, make sure you check over here and check these all these little boxes to make sure you got your colors on the right spot. This part over here in the left, this is the color order. This is how you thread the machine on the right. So if these may not always match. So for instance, it may not go one through 10. It may go one, five, seven, nine, 10, two, okay? So you, when you're threading your machine, be paying attention to what's going on on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay. And it is a lot to learn, Jackie, but you know, once you get the hang of it, it, this machine is very easy and fun to sew on. It's just, it's different. It, it doesn't stop in between colors. We have to tell it. Now, we programmed our little hands in here for it to stop where we need it to stop. The other way to do that, if you're going to be standing right here, like I am, and I could have done it this way, this little button right here, see, look, there's another little hand right there. The older machines say reserve stop. So I could just stand here because I know it needs to sew out the first step and then I need to have it stop so I can put my fabric in. I could have just touched this little button and it would have done that manually. And then I could sew out that one, put my fabric in, and then I could hit the button again and it would stop after the second color. So sometimes if I'm standing right there, I just use the old manual button with the hand on it. It just depends on where your appliques are. I like to program them in because often you know, you'll have an applique or so at the beginning and then you'll have maybe a half an hour of sewing and then another one, okay? Then you can walk away from the machine and it'll stop where you need to, to do something to it. So that's, that's how I'm gonna, I did it. I, I have mine programmed in. Okay, so now we're ready to do our little applique. So let's do our little applique. The first step is going to be, I'm gonna put it down here on the machine so you can see it. Hopefully you'll be able to see this if I get it about the right angle here. There, see if I can pull it down this way a little bit. 
the camera's a little harder at the standing machine. Okay, so now I'm ready. I've got this, my, my machine, it, this is a four by four hoop. I've moved my arm in here to accommodate my four by four hoop. And I'm gonna hit the lock button on the machine and then the start button. It's going to go ahead and stitch out my, app, my little applique placement line. Maybe, except it's, oh, there it goes. Okay, so there's my little applique placement line. And we programmed it to stop, right? So if you had walked away from it, guess what? The machine is singing to me, telling me I got to do something to it. So in this case, I'm going to lay my little piece of fabric over my placement line, just like I do on my home, my other home machine, my Luminaire, okay? And then I'm going to hit lock and start again. And it's going to stitch out step number two, which is the, the tack down line. And then it's going to stop. Okay. It's going to tie off and it's going to stop. And it's going to sing. Okay. Then it sings to me again and tells me I need to do something. Now, the one thing this button, this machine does have, this particular hoop, it's not as obvious. But there's a really cool little thing if you're doing applique with it. You can hit this little button right here. It looks like a hoop and some needles. And then if you hit this button right here, it'll actually push the hoop out so you can get into it to get your applique trimmed without removing it from the machine. Now, this particular one is so it's a small hoop, so it doesn't move it enough. So I'm actually just going to pull this out a little bit. Like that, I just pulled it out because I couldn't quite reach it. And I'm just going to trim this quick in the hoop. You can also remove it completely from the machine and lay it on your table. Which, and this is just a little small piece, so it's not hard to, I can get into it, okay. Helps a lot to have these double curved scissors because these hoops are taller than a standard hoop. And oops, I still got a little spot over here that I need to trim. There we go. And I'm just using felt today. I didn't I didn't put regular fabric in the hoop, but I've got some little applique fabric. So then I'm going to push this back in since I pulled it out. Okay. And then the sec the next step is going to be some placement lines for our little red our little red hearts. So I'm going to hit lock and start. And it's going to do my little placement lines. And remember, we told it to stop after this, so it's already programmed in. All I have to do is just wait for it to go. So see, applique is not hard with this machine. I, I applique probably more than I just do regular sewing with it, because I'm always applique. Now, if I have something that has a ton of applique, like it's like an hour worth of applique. I often do that on my my Luminaire just because I don't have to stand at the machine because mine is standing, but you don't have to stand at this machine. So there's our lines. Pull it out so you can see a little better. Now I think this piece of fabric will cover those. So I had some scraps, so I think that'll cover it. Okay, so we're going to cover those up. You notice the machine stopped and sang again. Okay. Oops, I think I moved it. You see, I think I moved it. Maybe not. No, I think it's okay. All right. Get it back in there. And then I'm going to go back up here. Here's my lock button. And here's the go button. It turns green once you hit lock. I call it lock and load. Okay. And then we're going to stitch out the placement or the tack down lines for those two little hearts. And remember, we told it to stop after the step again. Hopefully this is not too loud. This is, machine's a little louder, so it's going to do the first heart, and then it's going to do the second heart. Got to find my scissors. Okay, now this one is a little bit harder for me to trim, so I am actually going to take this out of the machine. Okay, now we remember that the little screw down here is the bottom. So we don't put it in upside down because ask me, I, I've done that lots of times. So I'm going to put this over here on my table, on my flat surface of my table to trim because I can't, it's a little hard to get into it. 
This one has two little hearts and there's a lot of little curves. So I'm gonna trim this off. Okay, so is this all making sense to everybody? So yeah, I can try, I can applique just fine in this machine. Just tell it where to stop. And I sometimes just stand there and use that manual button to make it stop. Because if all the appliques are all together like these were, I sometimes just stand there and use that. That's the way I always used to applique for years and years. But um, the little hands really do, I like to program them in now. Okay, so there's my little design. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead, now remember, I've got the screw down here. This goes, this is the bottom. I'm going to put this back in. Also be careful with these hoops. There's two little, there's, there's two little bumps that come up in the front here. Make sure that your hoop gets all the way flat and is locked in on both sides so that it doesn't, it doesn't get off alignment. Okay. So now we're ready. So let's look at the screen. So we've already done all of our stops. So now Hey, we're rocking and rolling now. It's gonna do the little, it's gonna do the little stems. It's just gonna sew now, and it's gonna switch colors because it knows where the colors are. So there's our stems. This one doesn't take very long. So this is step number. Here on the screen, it says five of eight. Okay. So we're on step number five. And then see, there was no stops on these last ones. So it's not going to stop. It's just going to keep going. So I'll put the camera down here so we can watch it sew. We didn't really sew on it last time, so I wanted to sew something for you. Sewing on needle three because it knew where that color was. So there's the stems. Those were done in the darker green. And then step number six is the lighter green because it's going to do the applique satin stitch around the little leaf. So we're going to do that. And then it's going to go around and it's going to do the satin stitch. And it knows where the color is because we put it on where it told us to put it on. So I've, I've had this machine for many years and I've used it this way. You know, this is what I do is I do a lot of applique, a lot of other sewing. We're going to look at a photo stitch here in a minute too. And you can see it's very easy to sew on it does a beautiful job of sewing. Just got to get that, got to get it. What was the hardest thing for me was just getting it through my head that the machine doesn't stop between each color. And if I need it to stop, I need to tell it to stop. And that's what I, with the little hands, I can program it in. It's very easy. And I can program in the colors. Because when I first got this machine and, and the Luminaire too, the way they changed the way it reads the thread charts, it was a little confusing to me because I, I had always used my software. And it doesn't work quite the same way now. But now I have the option of using my machine to change the colors and it's very fast. To change the colors. So now it's doing the red. This is step number seven. It's going to do my little hearts now. What does everybody think? Can you can you applique? So for those of you with the older machines, just be aware that you have, you have to look for the hand symbol and it'll be in with the colors. I think that's where it's going to be on most of the older machines. They just moved it and it took me a while to find it. I had the uh, PR1000 for a very long time and so I had to go find that button when I got my new machine a couple years ago. 
Here's one of the hearts, almost done. But what's nice about this machine, what's, is this machine a good option for quilting in the hoop? Yes, it is, Paula, I do, I do quilt with this machine. Um, the only thing I would say is that you're a little bit more limited for size of hoop. Um, this machine only has an eight inch wide. This one's 14. So when it comes to quilting, you're a little bit more limited to the size of the hoop, but um, I do use it for quilting all the time. So it does work. And then there's a table that lays on the top here to give you a flatter surface so that you can lay your quilt or your table topper on top of it. But no, I, I quilt with this all the time. It's just, I just have to be more selective of my hoop size, depending on what I'm doing. Because this one's eight by 14, there is a 14 by 14 hoop. Um, but it is a split hoop, so it doesn't work the same way. So certain things don't work as well in it. And there's the second heart. So I can do anything in this machine I can do in my um, in my other home machine, you know, my my luminaire. I do a lot of the same things in this machine. Um, I like the fact that I don't have to mind it. I can turn away from it. I particularly like doing garments in this machine because it is a little, it's more open, as you can see. It's not flat down here, okay? And it's much more conducive to unusually shaped items, especially cylindrical items. And now it's doing the last step and doing the little decorative stitch. And so see, it did the last, what, four or five steps, it didn't stop just because it, we had all the colors up there. All right, so now it's done with that. There we go. Sings to you and tells you it's done. So there's our little design. What do you think? So yes, you can applique in your 10 needle. You just have to go find your little hand and make it stop where you need to do something to the applique part. And on my machine, it's under this. It's on the edit screen. It's under this little symbol that looks like a piece of paper with the two spools in it. Okay. And under the older machines, it's going to be under the the um, the color box where we change the colors. All right. So that's where it's going to be in some of the older machines, like the PR 1000s. I think, um, Lynn, can you check on your 1050? I think it might still be there in, on your 1050 also. Okay. It is very versatile, Lisa. And, and Lisa is a, a new owner of a PR. And I think she's really enjoying it because it's just um, it's just another um, another facet of embroidery. I really like it because I can now do a lot of unusual items because I have a open armed mach machine also. So I don't make hats, but I do a lot of like tote bags and different things that are cylindrical. So it works very well. Okay, so here is our applique. All right. Okay, so now the other thing I want to show you is the other question I get is I want to do a, machine, a design that has uh, 15 or 17 colors. Will it do it? Because it only has 10 needles. Well, yes, it will, because the machine will do the first 10, and then it will tell you where to put the next ones. All right. So in this case, I'm going to look at this little photo stitch. Okay, so this is a photo stitch that I did. And I and some of you may have seen the photo stitch class on Sew Along with Jan on Sunday night. So I did this photo stitch. Okay, this one has 15 colors. They're listed here. This design was done in PE Design. So in the Brother software, and I have digitized this in 
um, the Pacesetter Pro um, thread. So in order for it to come up correctly on my machine, I need to make sure, oh, it's on the embroidery. No, it is Lynn, but go check in your uh, thread where you change your thread colors. I think it's also there for you to program it. That it's always on that last screen. That's the manual way. But can you check and see if that's where it is? Most of the older machines, it was with the color changing button on the edit screen. So if you could check that for me, then we could tell people for sure. Okay. So on this photo stitch, I digitized this in the PE design software. So I have digitized this in the colors, the Paysetter Pro colors. Okay. That's the colors I chose. When I am choosing colors in the brother software, um, I can I I can then come over here to my machine and I'll make sure that my before I bring the design in that my design is my machine is also set to the same color chart. So that's the important part about the newer um, multi needle machines and even the Luminaire. You have to have your color chart chosen that you chose in your software. The, the the PEP software, Dime software, doesn't always work real well with this either. So I like to change the colors in the machine like I just showed you. That's what I do if I've digitized something or, in this case, bought a design that just had weirdo colors in it. Then I can change the colors right in my machine. No problem. With PE design, you've got a different, different, different story because PE design is a brother product. Palette would be the baby lot product. So if I just choose my colors, my color chart here that I want, I know it's going to come up with the right colors. Okay. Okay. I'll have to look on yours, Lynn. You'll have to you have to take take some pictures of your screen, and I'll find it. So I, I they changed a couple of things between the PR one thousand and the ten fifty, and then the ten fifty and the ten fifty five, and they moved that twice, I think. So I'm not sure where it is on yours. I'll have to look. I never had that one, so. Okay, so I have it set to my color chart. I'm gonna bring up my little design here, and this is Harper. Okay, this is one of my one of our customers' granddaughters. Okay, so this is Harper. Tip this down a little bit so I can bring this up so we can get rid of the glare. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set it. And we're obviously we're not going to sew this out because it will when you get there you, you'll see that it takes a considerable amount of time to sew out i'm also going to move out my arm here and make it longer bigger because this one requires a larger hoop so i'm just going to move my arm so that it's at the right size hoop okay and i'm going to hit set and at this time, I don't need to change anything because this one I know is going to come up right because I digitized it in my brother software. I have my correct thread chart chosen on my machine, and I know it's going to come up with the correct colors. Okay, so I'm going to hit edit end. Okay, and I don't need to change this machine. I don't, I don't need to, sorry, I don't need to um, make it stop anywhere because this is just thread. This is a photo stitch, so it's just thread. So I'm going to hit embroidery now. Okay, so it's going to come up here and it's going to tell me that I need to put my colors and these were all pre digitized. And if I look at my color chart to verify the first color is 10 is 158. Yep. And then it's 817 and then it's 258. So all of these numbers over here in my boxes are the colors that I chose, but there are only 10. So I have to put the first 10 colors up here. So it tells me, now you see number four is grayed out. If I look down here on number four, see it remembered, I had white on number four, zero, zero, one. And guess what? That's the color that number four is. So it remembered it was there. So I don't have to change it because it was. it remembered it was there. So I'm going to change the other nine. So here's 158, 817, 258, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to change all of those colors on my machine the way I showed you earlier. Okay. And then I'm in at that point, 
I would start sewing this design. So what I want to show you is how the machine knows. It, can you see this little thing up here that looks like a hand and a spool? So if I go down this colors, these are all the colors, okay? See this red line right here? That's where the tenth color is. Now, like I said, it may not necessarily sew one through ten. It may throw sew different different numbers. But after it sews the first 10 colors that are on the machine and where it told you to put them, it's going to stop because look, see the red line? That means it needs new colors. So if I go up on up, these were the last five colors then. So it's going to stop after color number 10, whatever that is, and it's going to tell me to put on these colors. Okay. So if I fast forward, I'm just going to fast forward through it so you can kind of see. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that so you can see what it looks like when it does that. So here's the color number 10. If I tell it to go to color number 11 and click OK, then it's going to come up and say, oh, well, you need these new five colors on here. So it says you need to have 1352 on number one and 1308 on number two and 1043 on number three. So that's how it does it. It stops and tells you where to put the next set of colors. So I've done like some of the Anita Good Design designs and stuff on this machine. And sometimes there's 40 color changes. So I just put them up in the order it tells me to do it. And then after it gets done with the first 10, it'll say, okay, well now we need to change it to these colors. So I put those colors on and it does those and then it will stop again sometimes and I have to do another set. Okay, so that's the, the machine's very smart. It helps you. Okay. Um, if I were doing an Anita Good Design, this particular one, I could set the colors in my software and it will come up correctly in my machine. Um, if I was doing an Anita Good Design and I had all those 40 color changes, I would still have to go in. Let's pretend that. I would still go back to that edit screen and go back to that color change. And I would just hit the first color and I'd have my color chart just like I did now. This one only had a few colors, you know. I'd have my color chart and I was like, okay, color number one should be this, color number two should be this, and I'm just going to go down and change all the colors. Okay. Now, yeah, this one, somebody wanted to know how, how long it took. This one is, let's see, let me get back to the beginning of it. It says 143 minutes. So that would be about how many hours? Couple, about three hours. <laughs> so it, it's going to be, you know, because 60 minutes and an hour. So, you know, three hours would be 180 minutes. So, so it's a little less than three hours. For this one it's a smaller photo stitch this one's um gonna fit in an eight by eight frame i don't know if you can see it there's a little bit of a glare up here so fits in an eight by eight frame has 114,000 stitches i'm sorry it has 214 minutes it's 143 i'm sorry here 143 minutes until the color change it's gonna sew that long almost three hours before you need to change the colors over here it's 214 minutes total so it's going to be about uh what four hours about four hours okay so that's what that means this 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 is the actual full amount and then the, the number here is going to tell you how many minutes until you have to change the colors so even if you have you know it may only say 10 minutes before you have to change colors depends on how many you know how long all the colors go so that's what that's this number means and then this number means over here the total of the colors okay does that make does that make sense sorry I, I i wasn't looking at the whole screen <laughs> and this one has 15 colors it has 15 colors and it's 114,000 stitches okay so yes you can cut you can sew out things that have more than 10 colors really not a lot paula um what you do with this machine Every time you turn it on, if I just turn this off and turn it back on, you'll see. Every time you turn this machine on, it's going to tell you to oil it. 
So I oil it every eight hours. So I'm going to look and see here what it says. See if it's happy. See, it says, please put a drop of oil on the hook. So down here, I will take my oil bottle every eight hours. I'll just kind of go down here so you can see. And right down here along this little edge right here, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a drop of oil in here every eight hours. And so in, and normally I just do it when I, you know, rev it up to start using it. Okay. And then um, what the other thing I do is I change my needles fairly regularly. I like to try to change my, keep my needles, like I try to sew on them kind of equally so that, um, so that I can change them all at the same time. You know, if you break one, yeah, you need to change that one. But um, I try to kind of sew on them evenly and then I'll just, I'll do that. What's Lynn's asking me to do? So I'm just going to tell everyone, let your PR work alongside of you while you are working on your second brother, baby lock single nail. That's true. So I, I, I just kind of set mine up and then my sewing machine, my other sewing machine is like in front of my, of this machine. And um, which Kimberbell collection is this? And I just sit and sew while this one's embroidering so often, or sometimes I'm embroidering on both of them, but it's nice to have a, you know, one that just embroiders. So it is, it's, it's nice to have a second machine. And this one is fun because you can kind of let it, you know, when I do these photo stitches, which I do a lot, this one's gonna come up and ask me if I wanna go back to it. So it's probably gonna bring it back up again. But when I do these photo stitches, as you can see, it takes, you know, you know four or five hours to do these. And then I, I, um, I often do other stuff and I let them run. And sometimes I even go to bed and just let it run. And then, you know, it'll stop when you need the bobbin changed. You know, in this case, I didn't have to change a bobbin today, but it'll just stop and say, you know, you need to change the bobbin, you know, that kind of thing. So um, actually what it says is check up or thread, but it's actually, you can tell if, the, if it's the bobbin, because if it's just going to town and all of a sudden it just comes to a dead stop, it's usually the bobbin's empty. And, and you can just, you can just put the bobbin in and back up a few stitches and away you go. Um, Teresa, this is from an old one. I think it's up on the vault now. This is the Valentine, the Valentine volume one. It was really cute. It, it was an older one and I think it's up on the vault. Now, this is an old one that I had. I just happened to, I was just looking for something that didn't take too long to stitch out because I wanted you to actually see it stitch. So, okay. All right. So, does everybody feel a little more confident about maybe this would work okay to do applique on? And yeah, you can do more than 10 color items. You know, like I said, if I get an, uh, a need a good design design, what I do then is I bring it up. We'll just take this one out. I just bring it up in here. I'll bring my design up in here and I will just change the colors on all 40 colors right in the machines and then in the machine. And then I just set them up there where it tells me to put them and away I go. And, and, and it's just like, it's just like, and I put my little hands on. So if I need it to stop and do applique, um, which bobbins am I using now since we're having trouble with the coats? I am using, um, the ones that come with the machine right now are the Magna Glides. So that's the ones I have in the store right now are these Magna Glide bobbins. So let me hold this up. These are pre-wound bobbins. And they have the little magnet on the back, okay? They have a little magnet on the back. And I prefer the Coats bobbins, but we're really having a really, really hard time getting those right now. So these, these are the ones that they're sending with the machines right now. So it just depends on, um, but these are a paper-sided, normally a paper-sided pre-wound bobbin that we use in these PRs, but they are sending the Magda Glides, which are sideless at this point. I very rarely, um, wine bobbins for my PR unless I'm doing lace. So, all right. So that is a little introduction to applique and doing many colored, <laughs> many colored designs on the PR. So what does everybody think of that? You think you could do that? Once you get the hardest thing about the PR for me has always been the fact that it doesn't stop in between. So you need to have the colors right 
And once you do that, once you get the colors right in there, it just goes. And and once you kind of get that in your mind, and, and it took me a while. I, I've learned a lot of tricks about doing this over the years because I've had one since like, I think 2006 is when I got my first six needle machine. So the six needles are going to be the same way as these tens. It just has less needles and you have to change change a little more often. But I hope that helped everybody. And I hope that you can see how you know, the, the multi-needle machine, it's not just for businesses. It's not just to make caps. It's not just to make, you know, shirts because I do my shirt on here too. But um, but it, it's also for doing applique or doing quilting or doing a photo stitch, you know, just doing regular, you know, home sewing that I do all the time. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. I, I, uh, I enjoyed working with the PR because I don't get to do, I don't, I just love the PR. I, I sew with it on the time. So, all right. So if you have any questions, you know, message me through Facebook, message me, you know, call me at the store, email me or so on. And we'll be seeing you next week. I haven't decided what we're going to do next week. So I'm hoping to be able to do the, the edge to edge quilting very soon, but I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a machine yet. So we're waiting for the machines to come in. So thanks a lot, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.